Let's give it to him, man. Let's do it, Robert, because Robert Goldman, everybody, director at a, a pharmaceutical company. Is it a biotech or a pharma? It's like both, no? Yeah, we're, we're a startup biotech pharma company uh, focused on, you know, creating small molecules in a completely different direction through a transdermal delivery platform. So that's really what differentiates yeah. us from everybody else. Pro drug. Pro drugs are big. We could actually do a whole podcast just on that. Um, but yeah, we won't right now. Uh, <laughs> so this one we're going to do on um, something that's very near and dear to a lot of you guys and gals, you viewers. First of all, everybody go connect with Robert. His link to his LinkedIn is underneath this video. And if you're listening on the podcast, thank you for that as well. Um, go connect. It's in the show notes. His link. Everybody. Robert, before we started recording, you said your your network is your net worth. So having Robert as part of your network should lead to an increase in your net worth if you actually build a relationship with him. And the same is true for anybody on LinkedIn. If you provide a value, you're literally the definition means you're giving value to someone. Oh, you're providing value. So Robert, a lot of people are passionate about this topic. It's the topic of recruiters, job recruiters, not patient recruiters. We roast on them too. That's another podcast also, but job we'll recruiters. Have, we'll have to do one on that one as well. Uh, we could just <laughs> ro- We should just do a podcast roasting random people. So job recruiters, they definitely have, and I know many good ones, and we're not talking about you guys and gals. You know who you are. You don't need more more props. Uh, but the you know, there's lazy ones, and I do. I get these calls too. Um, I don't know. Where do we start? I mean, is it the fact that they're not putting in the effort and wasting time or like what, what makes you, cause you're really passionate about this, Robert, as well as a lot of people on LinkedIn. Like what is the main issue that you see here? You know, for me, Dan, it's, it's twofold. So you know, I, I, I obviously I'm on the sponsor side now. I spent many years, um, over a decade on the CRO side. And I look at what's happening at the larger CROs, mid-sized CROs, and I'm looking at the talent pool. And I'm, and I'm wondering if there's a correlation between the type of messages that, you know, even yourself, that we all get daily, right? Dozens of messages a week. Um, as it's converting over to what the talent pool is at these larger organizations, you know, I understand everybody has the right to learn, start off, you know, but that's part of growing. And I think that it's just, it's just laziness, right? I mean, recruiting is, 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 you know, we just have that that price tag over our head. You're worth X amount of dollars. And, you know, if, if you blast out a thousand emails and you get two or three responses and you get one converted, you know, that's the metric these companies work on. And it's really an unfortunate way of going about it. Like you mentioned, Dan, for me, it's all about relationships. You know, it's not, I didn't come up with this. I can't take credit for it, but I certainly believe it. And, and you mentioned it at the top of the show is my network is my net worth. That's my currency, right? Like yeah. that's what, like that, that is who I am. And I value all those relationships. The reason I'm in the role I'm in is because of my network. It's not because of any degree I have. It's not the letters after my name. It's not the experience. I mean, it, it's all because of, of who I, you know, ran into and worked with in my previous endeavors hmm. that, that called me and connected back with me to offer me this opportunity that I'm currently in. And so that's what I mean. And so if if recruiters would just stop, read the profile, build the relationship, Mm. get to know the candidate. And then if something flies across your desk, that's a role that I may or may not be interested in. Let's have a talk. Let's have a great talk, you know, but, but, you know, emailing me um, when I'm at a director level position about a CRA or a CTM role. and, And I have to give the preface. I love my CRAs. I love my clinical leads. I was in those roles, both of those roles, no disrespect to those roles. That's not my intention here, but I've worked very, very hard and very passionately and diligently to get to the level at which I'm at. And I don't wish to demote myself. And I don't think anybody 
would really want to demote themselves if they don't have to, right? So that's that's really where I want to open with you. So where probably the people watching this, if you're a recruiter, you're preaching to the choir because they're, I mean, if they take the time to watch this, that means they actually care about improving, you know, their skill set and their their expertise in landing someone like Robert um, for their next role or whatever the case may be. But this is like a human characteristic. I mean, there's and in any job, you're going to have the great, you're going to have the good, the the mediocre and then the awful. And in many ways, like recruiters are salespeople. So this is just a numbers game for them. Like, you know, some some will listen to this and say, that's great, Robert. But, you know, I can in the time it's going to take me to research your profile, like 20 minutes, I can send out 100 messages and I'll still be rewarded. So they're incentivized in many ways to not do what you're saying, although the best ones will or already are taking your advice on this and are getting disproportionately good returns on their investment. It's just, it's this, you can take this to exercise, you can take this to every aspect and you're going to have people doing it this way and people just throwing up shots and hope hoping something sticks so that that's the way i see it with these recruiters like but yeah it irks me sometimes too no it is i mean it's a business and i and i empathize and i get it you know but that's really what separates the good from the bad you know Mm -hmm. and and another thing it's like don't ask me to share my cv with you in your introduction that is like man oh man does that get me going you know because then they own your your you know your information and that recruiter owns you for the next couple of years and nobody else in the company can reach out and blah 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 really blah, blah. okay yeah, there's, there's a whole rhyme and a reason but it's like introduce yourself get to know don't don't so seriously I, i'm be honest with you the recruiters that I engage with just to build relationships with and not that I'm looking for another position right now, I'm, I'm definitely not, but the ones that I just, you know, cause listen, if something were to, I'm all about career growth, nobody in this industry, you have to have allegiance to yourself, right? That's number one. And that's advice for everybody out there. Um, none of your mentors, your leaders, your managers, hiring managers are going to come and do it for you if you don't do it for yourself. So what I'm trying to say here is that I'm all about self growth. So if one of my, you know, connections has a position that comes across their desk that thinks, you know, I may be a great fit for, you know, yeah, when you're not looking, some things fall in your lap, you know, so I'm never not open to exploring career growth for myself. It's not being selfish. It's just the way that our industry works. You have to take responsibility for yourself. So, you know, I think that with that said, it's just about, you know, finding that happy medium where you create those relationships, Mm. you create those discussions. And if something comes across, great. If something doesn't, also great. But asking me for my CV on your opening line, like, and scheduling a, a, a call with you. How about like, hey, you know, Robert, what makes you tick? What are you looking for? What's your dream job? Where do you want to go in five years? Are you happy now? Do you want to discuss? And then the other thing, if I say, no, thank you. Sorry, not interested at this time. Do you know anybody who is? Well, if I did, I wouldn't be referring them to you, to be quite honest. I'd be taking that <laughs> internal to my own company. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what's uh, crazy about these recruiters? Uh the ones that kind of pray and spray is they're, you know, they'll look at someone like you or somebody with experience because they're the only ones that they could actually make money off of. And they'll spam you more or less repeatedly. But when I send, because I have CRA Academy, CRC Academy. So I send part of my role is to send my students to different recruiters. When I send a student to these same recruiters, that are spamming me, okay? Because they are they got what they wanted, top of mind. All right, sure. my student needs a recruiter. This person's been spamming me. All right, boom, right there. There you guys go. They ignore the student. Why? They're not trying to help them. They're, they're looking at you as revenue and they're seeing the student as somebody that's not worth building a relationship with. Well, guess what? In two years 
And we've already had my students go on to be clinical trial managers already. So somebody took a chance on them. Somebody built a relationship with them. And now they're missing out on the next Robert Goldman because basically it's not worth it. It wasn't worth it back then. But when they become Robert Goldman, as far as expertise and experience, then it is worth it for them. Uh, so these are the same people. And, and the good ones, like the cream of the crop recruiters, they actually, I know because my students have told me, hey, this person, this recruiter had a conversation with me, told me, hey, you know, this is how this is how they're paid. They can't put me anywhere right now, but they're I, I have a relationship now. Exactly. Dan, somebody took a chance on me, you know, out of school. I had no experience. They said, listen, go get a coordinator site level job. Um, you know, get a little experience and then I can help you. I mean, I remember her name till this day. Um, and she's still, she's, she's at LabCorp now. And I still keep in touch with her 13 years later. Mm. And I always, and I always tell her like, thank you for taking a chance on me. Thank you for fighting for me. Thank you for championing for me. You know, um, even when I was moving from CRO to CRO, I mean, you know, like, like, again, there's a lot of great recruiters out there that understand the, you know, the value of that relationship. But I think that's, that's the exception to the rule. And I think it should be the rule to the exception. I think it should be the rule. I think all these recruiters should follow suit, create those relationships, and it's going to pay a lot more dividends than just blasting an email out. Tell, oh, another one I love. Sorry to get so sidetracked here. But Dan, no, this one, I just, got, I just got this one yesterday. I just, so I have a very, I work at a very small company. Okay. There's less than 12 people at my company. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know everybody. And he writes to me, I've recently helped several of your colleagues find new positions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I wrote back, I'm like, really, which, which, which ones, ones are those? <laughs> which, out of the, which out of the 12 are they? You know, cause I'd love to know they're all still here. So not really sure which one of those. They Unless are, but... they're breaking news to you. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and I'm sitting here today checking the, uh, the teams here and I still see everybody here, Dan. So, um, you know, it, it's just all those, those, you know, those blinded sales tactics that I get it. I'm just part of their distribution email list, but man, there's just something about that personalized approach. Like you mentioned that it's just, it's, it's so much more warming. And honestly, I engage with, with recruiters who just don't even ask me for my CV. I literally will reply back. I'm like, you know what? For the simple fact that you didn't ask me for my CV, yeah. let's, let's connect in chat. Well, you know what? I mean, with LinkedIn, and I get it, it makes sense what you said. Well, if they get your CV, that means like no one else could touch them in their organization, which right. makes sense. But like with LinkedIn, I was going to say, you don't even need somebody's CV anymore. Like, you know, you have their CV on LinkedIn and everybody right. has access to the same thing. So then at that point, your information is a commodity. It's well known who you, I mean, anybody who's watching this video can go see your CV. Yeah. Um, so then what, what becomes valuable is the relationship, which brings us back to uh, the beginning, but you know what? The bigger problem is this has been going on forever. So obviously these people are getting incentivized to continue operating the way they do. And they must be getting a return, right? Otherwise, they yeah. would fix the problem. So, yeah, I think I don't know. What, I don't know what needs to be done if more people need to speak up. Um, you know, if there's more discussions that need to be had. But you're right; it's the same thing with patient recruitment that we talked about, right? I mean, it's the same thing with, you know, uh, the systems we use, and we follow, and you know, it's just like it, it's such an antiquated process. We we we've, we've got to do better as an industry, just in in every facet, right? Yeah. I mean, LinkedIn, do you think LinkedIn is getting like, where is the place where um, as far as recruiters and then maybe just like spam in general, but where, where are these recruiters that, uh, that annoy you? Are they getting your LinkedIn and just spamming it? Or are they getting your, in, uh, your email or your phone number? Some have my phone number. I don't even know how, but I get text a lot now too. And I, I, that is such a great question. So I don't think LinkedIn is half of what it used to be. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's become politicized. It's becoming more <laughs> of a, it's becoming more of a Facebook than anything. You know, it used to be a professional, oh, a professional network place. Like, I mean, you know, sending your, <laughs> your kid to school for their first day, I'm very happy for you, but I'm here for a professional um, nature, yeah. you know? 
Yeah. Um, so anyways, that's just my opinion. But Humble brags. Uh, yeah. I'm beyond humbled. What is the one I, I hate? It's uh, beyond humbled. And then they proceed to brag like <laughs> without any uh, uh, reservations about it whatsoever. Exactly. Exactly. As long as so, you preface it with beyond humbled, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, spare me all that stuff. But yeah, no, most of it comes from LinkedIn, Dan. And honestly, uh, they do get my phone number. And I, not only do they get my phone number, they get my personal phone. So but how, are, how are they getting that? I, I don't know. Like, I truly that it, it boggles my mind. I, I don't understand. I mean, I'll get a phone call from a recruiter and say, Oh, sorry. Hey, Robert, I hope you don't mind me reaching out in this manner. I'm like, first of all, how did you even get, again, I don't know if they're, if it's in a national database, if they're doing like who is, or, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I I thought my number is private, but it's, I mean, whether it's my work number, my personal, they they find me, it's unbelievable. I wish I, because none of it's published on LinkedIn. I make it very, I make sure Mm -hmm. to disable that, you know, so only my close network, like if I give you my cell phone number, like I should give it to you. Not you shouldn't be caught, but yeah, it happens. And I, I don't know how they do it. I, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it either, but you bring up a good point because like you're a, you're what I call an entrepreneur. Like you, you could probably do well as an entrepreneur, but you work for a company, but one of probably I'm assuming your biggest strengths is the fact that you think like an entrepreneur for the company. Exactly. So they value you. And so it's not just a job at that point, like maybe a CRA or just even like a regular CTM, like you're high, high up at the pharmaceutical company to where you could make decisions as if you are one of the business owners. Yeah. Um, and so I also am like, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a site owner. I own different academies, but I still get like texts because on my LinkedIn, I do have like Yuma Klingo trial. I have coordinator experience. So I get like, and I don't even live in Orange County anymore. Yesterday, I got a text, Dan, some research company in Santa Ana is hiring coordinators. Uh, <laughs> and then they'll put like per hour, like they've done no, like I, yeah, like there's nothing like that's a good place to get started. Um, but like, we're well beyond in my career, like doing those kind of jobs, like for hourly, if I'm going to do that, I do it for myself, so wait, for my own site. Dan, you don't want to be a coordinator for another company for $23 an hour? Is what no, saying? for my own. Oh, I'll do it oh, for my okay. own for free. Zero dollars, <laughs> zero dollars per hour for my own. And That's again, no, in. and no disrespect, like, right. Like those, those are our, our frontline soldiers bless their hearts. I love each and every one of them and they deserve their, their underpaid. And I wish I oh, yeah. champion and, and go, it, go to bat for every one of those people. I, I have the utmost respect for those, those folks. But like Dan said, like, I'm not there in my career. I worked really hard to get to where yeah. I'm at and I don't, I don't plan on demoting myself back to a CRA role. Like I just pray and pray. That's all it is. Cause when I really needed those jobs back in 06, nobody was texting me back then, anything like that. I would have taken all of them back then. Uh, So it's just uh, pray and spray, but, and also the dear sir slash madam, you get those. Oh yeah. Dear sir. Your your, your experience is impressive. I actually got a, from when my last post kind of, you know, got a, got a pretty good response from it. A lot of engagement on that, on that post that I made, um, a CEO from, uh, one of the CROs overseas reached out to me. I can't remember his name right now or else I would give him a shout out. And I don't want to try and butcher his name, but I mean, here's the CEO of a CRO, <laughs> right. And, and he gets, he gets, you know, emails to be a CRA. Really? Like we have a CRA role for you and you're a CEO at a, at a zero. I mean, it's maybe a small <laughs> zero or mid-sized zero, you know, call it a hundred employees. It's not, you know, nothing to sneeze at, but it is the CEO of a, of a, of a CRO going to consider a CRA role. I'm not sure. You know, it's those, maybe it's in the like, great recession. Like, it's, yeah, Oh wait. It's, yeah. It's like comical. I'm telling you it's, 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 uh, it's unbelievable. But like you said, Dan, you know, there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of recruiters I still keep in touch with. Oh, yeah. Just to, just to have conversations. Hey, man, how you doing? What's going on in your neck of the woods? You know, um, it's great to have those relationships because if and when the time comes and I need, you never know. In a startup biotech environment, you know, yep. drug fails. I might be knocking on your door for a job, Dan. You know, yeah, I might I might 
might come down to the court. You know, I might, hey, I need a coordinator job right now. But what I'm trying to say is at least I have a network to pick up the phone. And, and, and it's not like I haven't talked to these people in three years, four years, you know? Right, right. And those that have taken the time to connect with me, get to know me, understand what makes me tick, that's who I'm going to do business with. Because at the end of the day, recruiting is a business and we have to be cognizant of that. And I'm going to say it again, right? The best ones, I find it very interesting and all it's not an accident why they're the best ones. They're willing to take their time out to talk to people that they know they're not going to be able to monetize. They know, and they're still going to have conversation with that person as they're planting seeds for the future. And the ones that are trying to monetize every single transaction, it's like they don't have time for you other than whether you say yes to a job or not. Uh, and I swear we should do a whole segment on this podcast of just like reading without mentioning the people's names or companies, reading people's email, LinkedIn. Email oh man, pages. what I love to, Dan, maybe we should do some, let, let's do a couple examples. Can we, do we have, I have time one. For it? I, that's why I logged into my LinkedIn. I okay. got one just, uh, 1044, about 20 minutes, uh, no more than that, about, yeah, about 40 minutes ago. How's it going at Yuma clinical trials? This guy knows because it's right on my LinkedIn. LinkedIn shows you are co-founder slash site director. Is that correct? <laughs> and uh, he's, he's an expert business coach, growth coach, professional keynote speaker, and something else, probably a best-selling author of some sort. Uh, I'm not going to click on his profile to see. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I did click on it. Yeah, best-selling growth author. See, I told you. So. Uh, in his case, he he's just asking. He's trying to start a conversation with me, but I can tell by his title um, in his bio that I don't want to talk to him because it's I don't need a coach right now. This is this is a good one, I, Dan. If I share, if I flash my screen, can you blur out this recruiter's name or, or is that not? No, possible? no, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well then, all right. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and read this one. Okay. This is just this is epic. Okay. <laughs> So this is this kind of pity. This was this was yesterday at seven ten a.m. in the morning. So my phone is dinging me at seven o'clock in the morning, which isn't bad because I always wake up early to deal with the East Coast, anyways. <laughs> but we recently helped quite a few of your colleagues make a career change. A career change, okay? A career change. <laughs> and you may also be looking to leverage your clinical trial management experience in this ultra hot career market. Although there has been unprecedented demand for clinical trial managers, workload and stability have continued to vary across the industry. One of my most highly recommended clients, privately held, have avoided mergers, are currently looking to hire a few and only a few experienced CTMs. <laughs> or scarcity, even, scarcity. Or even a PM. <laughs> when asked what is your favorite thing about the company the overwhelming response has been the people and leadership the average tenure of their ctm team is a whopping 10 years dan <laughs> for a room with internal growth if a career change would be something you're interested in robert i would love to connect with you let me know a couple of times below that work for your schedule a career change what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was a good one. And so I I, I, I would love to show you my uh, my um, my response, but I guess I can't. But um, that was that was a pretty entertaining one. It's um, it's almost comical how these guys um, think that these pitches are going to work unless it is working. So oh. check this one out. All right. Okay, I don't know ahead. this guy. Uh, his bio, I help CEOs and founders shape their categories by fixing their sales message. So, hey, Dan, I'm curious. Seems like you're selling an innovation. I'm not, actually, but he says I am. <laughs> How are you feeling about your sales message on your homepage? Is it working? Do you think the brand narrative is cutting through the noise in your space? That's another one I get. Not a recruiter, but what innovation do we have as a site owner? Like you're actually not, you're paid to not innovate. You follow a protocol. Here's a good one. Remote CRA contract opportunity. This was July 21st. Okay. This, and by the way, this was a day and a half after I made the post that got a huge response. Oh, after, recruiting, right? Okay. This is after it. Hi, Robert. I hope this email finds you well. I'm currently working on a number of contract CRA positions within 
the pharmaceutical industry. CRAs within the pharmaceutical industry, Dan. Um, hmm. I thought you might be interested in pursuing. We contract across the country on an hourly basis. If you're not currently available, that's okay. I'm hoping to have more of a call with you. If you're interested in chatting, please respond with an updated version of your resume. I look forward to connecting with you. By the way, we're offering a $500 referral bonus if you're able to give me somebody to place on this project. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dan, CRAs within the pharmaceutical, <laughs> with- within the pharmaceutical. I mean, I didn't know. Did CRAs work? I had some other pharma. I mean, what other industry do they work in, Dan? I, I didn't realize that CRAs were part of the pharma industry. That's this should be a this should be an entire segment. <laughs> uh, we should make a show. book about these. I mean, I, I mean, literally, it, it, it's. I'm just gonna flash this through. I mean, it just it goes. I mean, you can't tell any names. But it, it, yeah, it, I can't tell. It, it's never ending. But the, I mean, that means hundreds. that this that means that either two things: either this yes. works well enough for them to keep doing it, or it doesn't work for them. They move on to do something else, and somebody else comes in with the same strategy. Yeah, one of those two things. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, you know, if you look at a numbers game, obviously for people who are watching this podcast. You know, at least this is my understanding from the relationships that I've built from from recruiters that I have a high level of respect for. Whatever salary they negotiate for you, they get a percentage of that as a commission, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it behooves them to negotiate the highest salary for you because that's how they monetize and get paid, right? It's kind of like, Robert, it's kind of like realtors, you know. What they get paid a percentage to sell your home. So if you're listing your house with a realtor and let's say your home is worth let's say you could get like 400k but it's going to take the realtor some effort but the realtor knows hey he can get you 385k with no effort or he can if he really put an effort he can get you 405k but that's going to take like a lot of his effort so he's going to encourage you to list it at 385k and he's trained on how to say it like hey we're going to position it this way so that we can get a bidding war None of that stuff ever happens. And then you're going to sell it for like 390. He did very little work. And because that percentage to him, the difference of that like 10, 15 K is nothing to him. It's like a couple hundred bucks, but to you, it's a lot. It's 10, 15 grand. Right. So I see this recruiter doing the same thing. Like when it comes to negotiating, like, yes, on paper, their incentive is to negotiate your salary. But at the end of the day, they have a greater incentive to get you hired quickly and move on to the next one. Volume, right? The more people that they can exactly see. If it was me, I would concentrate on getting to know the person, placing high level, you know, good numbers, and then worry, worry about volume. But if you're just going to focus on volume, and like you said, you know, you know, sell a bunch of 385, I'd rather sell $1 million house than five $385,000 houses. Right. Like that's yep. just me, like working, working smarter, not harder. But, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting arena and it's really just a lot of like time wasted. That's what I think it boils down to. Right. Sometimes I enjoy, you know, those conversations and things like that. But at the end of the day, I don't want to be rude and ignore people. It's, you know, obviously, Dan, you know, better than anybody getting back to all the messages that potentially come through. You know, you want to get back to as many as you can. But a lot of, lot of wasted time. You know, it's like their time yeah. is valuable. My time is valuable. Let's, let's just save each other's time, you know? Yeah. There's a lot that could be improved in that industry. And um, it's good to see some people like Lindsay Summers. And I know one, I, she just got hired in-house now by a sponsor to be their recruiter. So she's not like um, a freelancer anymore, but there's good, there's good ones that come and go. And when you do meet a good recruiter, you know, they are worth their weight in gold because they they're willing to establish relationships with you. And if they're smart, you know, a recruiter would just start commenting on your stuff or other people's stuff. And that's how you're going to get to know them, not necessarily by them spamming you. So I swear we should just do a podcast on reading like foolish things on LinkedIn. Maybe we'll do that. Brad Hightower and Robert and me and whoever else wants to do it. I'm sure we can have fun like once a week or maybe once a month just exactly. reading them live. There's some really bad ones on there. It'd be pretty entertaining, honestly. You know, I mean, it's, it, it, it is. But they, and, and that's really, honestly, instead of getting irritated, now I just take it for comic relief, you know? Yeah, comic relief is good. Yeah. One of the things um, I... I could see how um, if I were 
not running my own business, how it could irk me. The way the way I see it now, because I get pissed, man. Like I'm doing an interview or something, and my phone's just blowing up. And my favorite is when they hang up because you don't answer, and then they'll call again. So here's one. Here's probably one right now. Like, so they they call, they hang up, you don't answer, they call again, and then I text them like, "Hey, I'm busy. I'm on a Zoom." Uh, and then they'll text me back, "Hey, I have this job. If you're interested." They end up being most of the time a recruiter. And so one of the things that uh, really bothers me about that, like them interrupting you, is the fact that they can just interact with you on LinkedIn at your own time, right? Like leaving a comment maybe. Uh, and then I can, it helps me because it helps the, my algorithm for my sure. post. So now you actually are value adding. The second value add for you is I get to know who you are, or at least I'm aware that you're there. But one of the things that keeps me less irked about even that right now is the fact that uh, in a way I'm grateful people are reaching out because if shit ever hit the fan, like it's nice to know, okay, you do have backups. Exactly. You can go to. So exactly. that, that keeps me like somewhat grounded, but it's still annoying as hell. No, Dan, that's that. <laughs> you're, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. That's that, that brings me a lot of comfort. Like I said, the ones that I have the high level of respect for, if anything ever were to like, you know, implode and I'm like, man, I got to make a move quick. You, you know, I, I, I have that Rolodex ready to go of those select yeah. contacts yeah. that I can lean on and be like, you know what, I'll, I'll have a job tomorrow. You know, it wouldn't be the annoying ones though. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, now I just block them. I, I literally just, just do a little chuckle and, um, and, and just, just hit the good old block there. So that's why my follower account goes up and down, up and down, <laughs> up and down, you know, well, got to we'll give everybody a fair, got to give everybody a fair shot, you know, and we'll I, do it and again I, because yeah. we gotta, we gotta like talk about the future of LinkedIn and maybe who knows, maybe the job recruiter, maybe there's no need for it in the future with LinkedIn and then people just kind of having relationships, but obviously it's an industry that's still growing and recruiters do get paid good money. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but it's a lot of fun doing this with you. Maybe we will do a segment. I'll talk to Brad Hightower and see yeah. if he'd be interested. That's awesome. And well, Dan, thanks so much for having me and, you know, getting together. It's always a pleasure seeing you. And, um, you know, we'll do it again very soon. We'll do more podcasts. Thank you, Robert. Everybody go connect with Robert. Recruiters too. Go connect. If you're a recruiter, go connect. Please. <laughs> connect with Robert. With and let uh, him know what you yeah. think. Most tell, will agree. Tell me, yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, listen, I mean, I respect everybody's opinion and challenge me to rethink it. You know, I'm happy to rethink it. I, I am, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not set in stone. I like to rethink everything I already know. Um, that's, that's why I like, you know, that, that's how I grow, you know, recruiters. I, exactly. I feel like recruiters are like realtors. The first opportunity they're given to like throw a competitor under the bus, they will, they'll be like, no, Rob, you're absolutely right. These recruiters suck. This is why I'm not that way. <laughs> exactly. hundred percent, hundred percent. No, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. And I, and I've gotten, again, I mean, boy, I don't want to call out specific names, but I have at least a dozen of those exact messages, Robert. I saw your recent post and I completely agree with you. And I think we should connect <laughs> so I can show you why we're not that way. And it's like, yeah, I, listen, I respect the hustle. I respect if, the hustle. If you send me your CV, you'll see why I'm not that way, Robert. Right. And you know what? If I send you the CV, you owe me a $500 Amazon gift card. That's right. <laughs> which you'll never get, by the way. I've done that and I never got it. And then they go ghost. But anyways, Robert, exactly. everybody like, subscribe, comment, share, go connect with Robert. Stay tuned for the next episode with Robert. Maybe we'll bring on Brad to read those messages. Catch y'all later. Bye-bye.